continuing our exploration of bullying from the perspective of our brain, which is responsible for so many of our human functions, we're back at the Hamilton Elementary School in Chicago, Illinois, this time asking the older students some questions about bullying and their feelings about bullying and some questions about the brain. We also gave them the same coloring exercise we gave the younger students, which was to colorize a bully's brain and to colorize a bully's brain after he or she has stopped being a bully, if that indeed is possible. And this is what we got. Really dark and negative, but in some spots there's like still, still parts that show that they still care even though they have problems going on. Look-wise, it's the same as just how they um, think it's different. Mean and negative thoughts going around, such as, I don't like you, or you're ugly. Revenge and like anger, and all the bad like memories. Very dark and intense and very like evil. They have completely different thoughts going through their brain. Like, when they're when we're thinking about friends and family, they're thinking about hatred. I believe that a bully can change, but um, you would have to repeatedly tell him to stop. It depends on the person, but I do think that um, a bully can change if they've been told to stop because um, they've been given a chance. It really depends how other people around them interact with them. Because if other people around them don't give them a chance, they're going to stay being mean. They're not going to change. They're going to feel like no one's going to accept them. I think if they actually try to and they put the kindness in their heart and actually give the stopping, um, they're all in everything. It might not change as much. It'll still be like some negativity in the brain, maybe like far in the back. It really depends if the bully doesn't listen or is very hard to persuade, then um, it would be hard for them to stop. But if they listen and um, they like know how you feel, then I think they would stop. very upset and I would I wouldn't I wouldn't feel as good I would feel uh, sad and like down because um, the person keeps on talking about me I've actually been bullied in the past and I know what it feels like and it's just like it's the worst feeling ever it's like you're being brought down every day and like no one's there for you you feel like you're all alone really bad because if bullies have problems going on at home then they wouldn't have any problem to mess with me personally I have been bullied before and you just get your stomach kind of turns and you feel down and you can't um, you don't feel confident anymore once it starts. Um, after they pick on you, it's really hard to stand up and tell someone because you're scared they might tell, um, hurt you again. I'm really um, bad about myself, I think, and sad. Um, I would um, be feeling bad inside, but I don't know if I would like go to anyone and tell them about it. I wouldn't feel um, very good either because if, um, let's say if you put yourself in that situation, you wouldn't feel uh, good either. So um, I always think of me in that situation. I would try to stop the bully because the bullies wouldn't have any reason to pick on that person. I would try and stop them or ask them why they're picking on them and try and stop them. I would be an upstander even though I might get in trouble by the bully or they might go after me next. I would feel bad for that person because it's not fair that they're being bullied on. I would be an upstander and try to help them. I would feel really like bad because knowing I could do something but not necessarily maybe not doing something because of my of the feeling like it's really hard to stick up for someone even if you know them or don't because you're scared what if what if they come for me next? What if they try to hurt me next? So you most of the time you keep it in and you don't say anything about it. 
do think we are all capable of being a bully because um, we've all got problems within ourselves, and sometimes we like to bring that upon other people. And um, like sometimes we just do it without thinking about it. Yes, I think so uh, because you know everyone picks on uh, other people like they have done it before, and um, you know like even though you make like a small joke about it, they can. They can uh, really uh, have a uh, sensitive feeling and they might feel sad. I do think we're all capable of being a bully because we, we are bullies. If you have a sibling or something and you, you're mean to them, even for a day, you're bullying them because they can't do anything. They're, especially if they're younger, they can't stop you. They can't be like, please don't, they, they, they can't fight back and it's not fair. Yeah, if, like if you have something going at home, then yeah, you could be capable of being a bully. But if there's nothing going on, then you shouldn't want to be a bully. Everyone can be a bully, just some people choose not to be. I do think that having a hard life will force you to be a bully because most people that I do know, even myself, before I was, um, when I was younger, I never had to had time to spend with my parents or people used to always bully me and I think that because people bullied me that I did become one and but I did make a change and now I'm not a bully. I think being a bully is a learned behavior. You can learn it from your parents if your parents are mean to you it's just gonna like grow on you. You learn it from other people. Bullying is a learned behavior because you can't just be born bullying people for no reason. I think you're, you learn it at home because you might be treated that way or school. It might be some problems you have or some parenting problems, home problems. A little bit of both because the people that you're around, you build onto the, their, their features and you start joining into what they feed you. If your parents teach you that it's okay to bully or if they bully others, then you start to think that it's okay to bully people. This is a bully's brain and the brown rep is like when they're thinking about like bullying someone so like the, yeah, like when they're thinking about bullying someone and like it's more in the front of their brain because it's what they're thinking about the most because they're like, let's bully, let's just, let's just hurt someone, let's make them like feel terrible about themselves. The gray, which you can kind of see is like creeping into different places, is anger. They might feel anger from their home life or from other people not accepting them. The red is their schools and their like their studies and there's not much red because they can't focus on that if they don't have like any security in their in their life. The pink is being like their niceness when they want to be nice and there's really only little parts of pink like kind of scattered around us, not there as much because they're not thinking about, oh, well, let's go make some friends, let's be nice. They can't think about that because they're really, when, when you're a bully, you're not being accepted at all. The blue represents when they're calm. They're not calm, bullies aren't that calm always, but when, they, when they're like sleeping or like relaxing or just coming home, they are calm because they're like, I just last another day because they can't really, they don't, like I said before, they don't socially fit in. It's not necessarily that they're all mean. It's just they don't have friends or family to support them in what they do. The purple equals their friends, and there's not really any purple. There's only like a little bit because they don't have many friends. And then the orange is home. And like you can see the gray slipping into the orange because their home life is probably not the best. I hear I have revenge, so they just pick on people for no reason, just to make themselves feel better. And here I have knowledge. This is what they've learned, what they've learned, and this, but they still have some. And here they have sorrow. They still, like they still cry, even though, even though they're bullying people. And here, there's here there's just a lot of anger in them. And the only way to express, only way to express it is by revenge. When a bully is happy, I don't think that they're gonna think of bullying anyone at that moment. They're probably gonna do it later on, like when they're mad, but otherwise, I don't think they would mess with anyone. 
a bully is pretty selfish. They aren't thinking of anyone else but themselves. This is a bully's brain that changed. Um, as you could see, like the good thoughts and feelings got uh, much bigger and like their problems and anger and hurt started going away. So um, I think that we're all capable of to like change and like these problems could lessen. After it's been told to stop, um, there's a lot of uh, good thoughts and um, like excited and happy thoughts. Um, there's not much anger or re uh, revenge. This is the bully's brain once he's been taught not to be one. Um, the love and caring has grown and it's come back. There is still some anger, but everyone has anger problems because not everything in life is happy. But there's also happiness in his brain now. Uh, he's more kind towards other people. He's calm. There still is some anger because they're still recovering. But once they change fully, there will be no anger. As you could see from the answers today and from our prior episode, no matter how old you are, bullying is hurtful and bullying is wrong. Our brain is influenced by two factors, genetics, which we inherit, and environmental factors, which we are able to control. Our brain allows us to choose between right and wrong. Kindness feels so good, so why not create a more mindful environment? And on that note, that concludes our episode today. That is a wrap for Neural Wrap. See you next time.